Well, now joining us for our tech talk on data virtualization for faster decision making and business agility, where we're looking at talking about seamlessly implementing the concept of data marketplace, enabling all business users to derive value from self-service analytic tools, and also applying consistent security and governance policies for across the enterprise data architecture. For this session, we're joined by Christy, Director, APAC Sales Engineering, Denodo Technologies. Well, Chris, with over 16 years of experience in data integration, data governance, data quality, and system architecture, leads enterprises to the challenge of transforming their data contained in disconnected, disparate silos into valuable information assets that the whole enterprise can use and understand. Ladies and gentlemen, with this, I now present to you on your stage and screen, Chris Day. Thank you so much, Chris, for joining us. How are you feeling? Going well, thank you. And it's uh, great to be here today. To talk yeah. to everyone. So Chris, with this, the stage and screen is all yours. And once again, a big welcome to the World Big Data and Analytics Show. Over to you, Chris. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, it's great to be here, everyone. And uh, I hope you've had a great day so far. Uh, what I'd like to share with you today is just starting to talk about data and how we can support faster decision making and business agility, uh, in this case, particularly with data virtualization. The place I'd really like to start is having a look at what agility really means, or whether we talk about organizational agility or business agility. It's really that ability for a company or for an organization to address the challenges, whether they're challenges from inside the organization or external, that allows them to move with flexibility and meet the competitive nature that uh, the marketplace presents. This is a, a definition from Sven Carlson et al, uh, a paper that he did on informatics uh, based in Sweden. Uh, I really like this definition because it goes to more than just being uh, agile about data, but really starts to address some of the value that we can get as an organization from being agile or from being flexible with our data management practices. If we sort of take a look at some uh, figures, we can see here that all of these are related to data regardless of whether we're talking about a survey from MicroStrategy or professionals, where 94 of those business professionals say that analytics is really important to the continuing growth and digital transformation of their organizations. Or even if we take a look at a 2019 report from Gartner around the market leaders and seeing data as the core to influencing their decisions. And 76% of CFOs reported to Accenture that without that one version of that truth, that single unified view of all of their enterprise data, they will struggle to meet those objectives. And then of course, we all as data professionals know the time it takes to find, prepare and protect data before we even start using that data to get some analysis, to get some insights. The point about all of these facts and figures is really that it, it is data that's at the core of being able to be agile, but it's not easy. So what's in the way of achieving business agility? Why is it so difficult? Let's take a look at a sort of a representation of an enterprise analytics landscape or, or an information landscape. You can see here across the landscape, we have all of these different repositories, all of these technologies. Each of them has value, very high value, and delivering some great insights in and of its own, such that we have Kafka to handle all of the streaming data. We have our lakes that are able to handle the vast volumes of data. Then we have some of the emerging technologies around graph analysis or data warehousing so that we can start to understand the relationships, understand the value and historical view of the data. Ultimately, it then goes into different uh, 
insights, different uh, domains around master data management, whether we're talking about customer or product, asset, location. You can see that each of these are very valuable, are, re are required by an organization so that they can get some insights, get some understandings. The downside of this is that we now end up with a very siloed uh, landscape where each of these different technologies, each of these different uh, capabilities ultimately become a silo, independent of the other and making it difficult in to get that consolidated view, that unified single view across all of those data repositories. This isn't to say that we shouldn't uh, use all of these technologies because it, it is a requirement. It is something that we have to do just simply to be able to analyze, to use those different technologies. But we have to find a way of leveraging the, the value that we get, but also blending it together in an easy and unified way. I'm just pausing here at the moment as my Screen has, has just frozen, so we'll see if it comes back. Uh, but I would just like to you know, uh, point out also that if you do have any questions as we go through, then please don't hesitate to submit them to the, the Q&A. So as we go forward, we can see that the, sorry, just bear with me for a moment. I'll just periodically stop sharing. I, I I think the thing to uh, consider is, um, as some of your speakers have already uh, revealed this morning, is to consider the outcomes that you're looking for, right. to, to, to take into account what you're trying to achieve rather than just solving for a technical problem. And this is very important because once, I mean, we can use lots of technology to do lots of different things, but if we're not achieving the business outcome, then it, it really has, no meaning, no, nothing. Um, so, so I think that's something to always keep in mind for the future. Absolutely. So, uh, Chris, we do have it on the screen. We're looking at leading to data silos as yes. uh, the next slide. So over to you, Chris, again. Thank you. And my apologies to everyone for that, that slight hiccup there. Um, so, yeah, this, this is a, an illustration of those silos. What this means is that from a user perspective is we end up with the, the user sort of surrounded by all of these different silos, all these different capabilities, um, being totally overwhelmed with the data. And they really start to question, well, where should I get that data from? What does the data mean? How does it relate to all of these things? The answer is out there, but it's like, where does, where does that user start? One way of solving this is to consider self-service. We've all heard about self-service. It's a strategic outcome that many organizations look for so that they can in fact deliver those outcomes faster, can prevent the, I suppose, the roadblocks, the challenge of different speeds because you know, as business users, we want things to be fast. Whereas IT professionals, we understand, well, change can take time. So, when we start talking about self-service, this does present a challenge because now we have all of these reports. We have duplicate reports. The report that I create might be similar, but not quite the same as the report my colleagues create. And so now we have conflicting data. We have uh, mistrust around the reports. If I didn't build it, well then I don't trust it. And we end up with additional extracts of data data just sort of blended right across the environment. And so that also presents for us a governance and risk problem. What we really end up with is a lack of standards, a lack of enforcement and understanding, uh, which then increases the risk, reduces the collaboration. An alternative to this is a data marketplace. And this is where data virtualization as a technology uh, helps us because we have now virtually or logically connected all of those different silos of data without having to 
consolidate them, physically consolidate them into a, a single repository. We can still leverage all of the valuable capabilities that each of those individual systems present to us that we require in order to process and store all those different shapes of data. But we can now join it together, logically build and model and understand that. And this is all based on metadata. So now we have a single platform that not only allows us to integrate the data, but we also have a single platform that allows us to collaborate, to enrich, to understand the data that we're using, all based on metadata. Now you might say, well, that's just, I suppose, moving the problem to a different level. And I, I would agree. The difference being now that as a single data platform, as a single unified metadata repository, we can understand, we can find, we can uh, discover the data all based on a data catalog. And this really is the key difference between just having a, an extensive uh, information landscape and a data marketplace. It's that data catalog. So, What's a, what is a data marketplace? This definition from Mark, Mike Ferguson, a consultant that wrote a paper on intelligent business strategies, outlines a data marketplace as something that contains ready-made, trusted data, analytical assets, services, uh, common data names, all fully documented and available with full lineage in a business glossary allowing users to easily find and understand and share across the enterprise. So it, it really does solve those challenges around how do the users find it at the right time and the right place. So what, when he says that it contains trusted data and, and uh, analytical assets, what in fact types of data assets would the data marketplace contain? Well, it may be literally data assets. Uh, views of all of those physical repositories across our information landscape. Of course, we've then taken those data assets and we've virtualized it. We've built out models specific to an entity, specific to a line of business that can now be discovered. We have queries, we have reports that are pre-developed that I can now share with my colleagues. We have uh, full lineage, understanding where that data comes from. We can even start to collaborate and recommend or warn or uh, add additional documentation. All of these different types of assets can now be available and published within that data marketplace. It also allows me and my colleagues as users to answer the questions. Is the data trusted? What is the level of sensitivity? What do others think about this data? How frequently it is used? And Really, if I have questions about this data, who owns it? Who is the steward? Who is the one managing the governance of this? And using a, a data marketplace powered by a data catalog, we can answer all of these. Finding the data through faceted search, being able to understand and uh, rate the data to the level of trust, the level of completeness, to provide feedback, to add comments, and track down who within the organization understands this data, who owns the data. All of these are really valuable pieces of information, especially when we want to build business agility, but within the realms of a governed and trusted environment. One customer that's done this is Festo. Festo are an organization based in Germany the leading supplier of automation technology and training. In 2020, they had a, a revenue of 2.84 billion euros uh, and have been around for a long time. The challenge that Euro had was trying to find an agile way across all of their different data repositories and silos of information, because I'm sure you can appreciate as a manufacturer of automation technology, there was uh, a wide range of systems, uh, streaming data, data in information silos, accounting data, uh, warehousing data, dispatch data, a wide variety. And they wanted to take all this data and 
continue to improve their operational efficiency, to find uh, new insights around this data that they already own, that they already had within their organization. And they also wanted to take this data and start to monetize it, start to actually build new data assets that their customers would in fact find useful and would be able to subscribe to. The end result was using Donato data virtualization and building up a data marketplace. Here you can see a representation of the data virtualization that showed you a layer across all of their different repositories, their data warehouse, their uh, files such as Excel, um, all of the operational systems around energy and, and processing, and the machine data that was streaming off all of those manufacturing things. This presented a platform that they could plug in their monitoring and auditing. They could also integrate the security and governance in a consistent and transparent way. As consumers, they could now have one single unified platform to do their operational reporting, to do their dashboarding and scorecards, as well as the data catalog that allowed them to explore, discover and understand all the data assets, allowing them to reuse rather than rebuild or recreate those assets. This Festo called their big data analytics framework that really allowed them to support all of the business users, regardless of whether they were data scientists or whether they were building uh, reporting and dashboarding. Using the Donato platform allowed them to get access to all of this data, whether it was on premise or in the cloud in real time, so that they could meet both those operational and analytical use case. And as I said before, it allowed them to be very consistent and unified about the, the management, the governance, the security of all of this data. The benefits for Festo were that they could now get complete insight, uh, insights based on all of the data assets rather than just the easily accessed data assets. It could simplify consumption for all of the users rather than just the highly technical users or the users that just happen to know where those data sets were. It also now had a platform that they could plug and play different data assets into, as well as different data consumers. This really facilitated faster, more complete decision-making and increased both the speed and agility of the business users, because they no longer had to request specific data sets to be created, to be uh, instantiated, to be copied around, but it also allowed IT to be very strategic around what infrastructure they were using without disrupting consumption, without disrupting the actual business of doing business. As we've seen, the real benefits of data virtualization around business agility and sharing insights and just gaining visibility of your environment are that it now gives you that complete view of all your enterprise data, whether we're talking about on-premise, cloud, uh, highly structured data, uh, streaming data, regardless of where that data is being processed or currently resides, we can get unified access to it. It lowers the, the time it takes to get the return on investment, because now using a single data platform, we can use it multiple times. We don't have to build specific repositories for specific uses. And it really does allow you to do integrated real-time access to all of that data. So now we no longer have to copy data around, replicate it, uh, stage it in different repositories just in order to re achieve an outcome. Reducing the cost, increasing the speed, reducing the risk associated with data delivery. So with that, as an introduction to data virtualization, I'd encourage you to register for a Donato test drive. It's a freely available resource on the web that after registration will stand up a little sandpit in uh, the cloud provider of your choice, 
where Donodo is already pre-installed with some pre-configured data sources and allows you within about an hour or an hour and a half to get a really great and hands-on understanding of the capabilities of Donodo. What it can do, how it works, all without having to install and configure your own environment. So I'd really encourage you to do that. So with that, I'd just like to say thank you for your time and also thank you for your patience during my uh, technical mishap. But I was just wondering if there were any questions at all that anyone would have for me. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, well, absolutely no apologies on the technical mishap because it gave me an opportunity to converse with you in the middle. But uh, Chris, an excellent uh, presentation right there. And uh, thank you once again for your time. I'd really uh, request the audience since I'm sure they'd love to stay connected with you to personally connect and also to visit your booth. I think, Chris, that'll be a great way to take conversation forward. What do you think? That would be great. I'll be at the booth and my, the rest of the team is also at the booth. But please, yes, reach out and connect. I'm very happy to have a conversation. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Chris. Uh, thanks for joining us on the main stage or at the World Big Data Analytics Show. We'll see you soon on your booth. Thank you for once again for your time. Mm -hmm.